Dark Rifles. I want to let you know that I have Doug McCants here. Uh, Doug McCants is a Korean War veteran. He fought in the 24th Infantry Division, probably one of the, all the biggest battles in the Korean War. A lot of them. And uh, was in the original Ranger companies. Yeah. Uh, so, 1949, 17 years old, you decide to join the Army. Get yourself yep. in the 82nd Airborne. Yes. Uh, what was the 82nd Airborne like in those days? It was a pretty good Army. It was uh, very well disciplined, well trained. Uh, everybody's class A personality, and they wanted to be paratroopers, you know? Yeah. So it was a good, good group of people to be with. Uh, Korean War kicks off. You're still 17 years old, correct? Yes. And they ask for volunteers to go to Korea. Yes. And you volunteer? Volunteer. With 28 others? Yes. Get on a barge. And you show up to Korea around July of 1950? Correct. And you had a mohawk. Yes. Is that I correct? Had, I had a mohawk and yellow water paint. And you get off the boat and describe what it was like showing up at, at the Pusong, at Pus, Pusan? Yes, Pusan Harbor. And what was that like your first day in Korea? Well, when we got off the big ship onto a barge, went ashore, and uh, I was in charge of the uh, detail. I was a corporal and uh, not much rank in Airborne at that time. And uh, I uh, tried to talk to the sergeant there and tell him that we were going to be uh, in the Rangers. And he said, I don't think about any Rangers. You guys are going up on the line in the morning. And he takes a piece of chalk and writes on our helmet where each one of us are going and uh, so uh, we split up and uh, most of those guys over half I never saw again in my life but we all went our way and uh, total confusion well, it was a very difficult first thing we did is show up and uh, the lieutenant came out and uh, said, who are you guys? And I said, we're in the age second airborne. And he says, uh, oh, and I said, uncover. And we took our helmets off and we had this haircut and the draw job down and he goes in and hollers for the commander. The commander comes out and walks around and looks at us. He says, I don't know if the enemy's afraid of you, but I am. <laughs> what was the line like? Well, the line at that time was very sparse. The guys, the holes were 40 yards apart, and we were holding a great long line with very few people. And uh, he asked me if I knew how to shoot the BAR, which I did. So I went down to the BAR, and he sent me down on the end of the line to hold the line. And you, you made a comment that you really thought the North Koreans were top-notch soldiers. Yes, they were. What, what made them so good? Well, they were uh, pretty well trained by the Russians. Very well trained, I should say, and they were experienced in combat. They fought most all of them were Man Manchuria uh, veterans, and uh, they were, you know, lean and mean and tough, and uh, they didn't. They carried a very light load and moved very fast. The North Koreans kept attacking. You kept having to retreat. Yes. Kept having to retreat. Kept having to retreat until one point they gave the order. You all thought that every, people were talking about hey, they're going to get us off the boat and go back to Japan until an order was issued that you're going to do is the stand and die order. Yes. The stand, and that changed things. Yes. Stand, stand and die order issued out of Tokyo by McCoth. And uh, that made everybody rethink the whole thing. And uh, people got a lot more serious about defense and did a better job from then. What what did a what did a North Korean attack kind of look like? If you had to describe, what was was a typical way they would do it? Well, they're running waves, and uh, they depend on the Koreans. Uh, North Koreans use a lot of little burp guns, automatic guns, very good on the attack, and uh, they run very much like a modern army. Uh, they're always trying to flank you. You have to be careful of that. Uh, when the Chinese attack. That, w that was very different. They had a very different style, and they came first with satchels full of hand, uh, hand grenades, and they threw those hand grenades, 
the next group had all burp guns, and then we shot the ones with the hand grenades, and shot the ones with the burp guns, and then come a regular army that maneuvered. Did they have tanks? Would, would there be any tanks much or no? There were tanks, yes. The, uh, the North Koreans had Russian tanks. And uh, they were very good with them, and they deployed them, and they were well equipped and had the right stuff. We uh, didn't have any anti tank things. We had the old three inch bazooka that wouldn't penetrate, and uh, the artillery shells that the Smith Brigade had bounced right off those tanks because they were high explosives and not armor piercing. We and another thing I found on my first day uh, was that the guy says, no, we don't have any flares, strip flares out there, but we got a lot of tin cans with rocks in them. So listen for the rocks rattling. And if you hear the rocks rattling, let the guy know 50 yards upstream from you, and we'll get a hold of Brits and have the Brits send up the star shell. That's how primitive we were at month into this war. And the North Koreans, would they attack mostly at night or during the day? The, the North Koreans would attack any time. The Chinese predominantly at night. Around you, the... Yes. The North Koreans would also, if we gained ground, took a hill or something, you could depend they're going to hit you again at night to try to take it back. You said earlier that, you know, we, we always train for the last war. Yeah. And we don't train for the, you know, it's almost impossible to train for the future war, but there was kind of a difference between what reality was and what you've been trained to do. Sure. What was the reality that kind of caught you off guard? What What was it that was different? Well, when we fought the Korean, North Koreans, <clears throat> we found them to be very, very good soldiers. And we were amazed at how fast they could move uh, in the hills and mountains and trees. And uh, they were competent with their weapons and uh, they're all veterans and it surprised everybody. Uh, the commanders even were really surprised. You know, they all thought, we all thought there's some third world country and they wouldn't have any idea what a modern army was about. But as a matter of fact, they could move much faster than we could. And uh, they could employ flanking maneuvers and stuff that we, we could just hold them on because they moved so fast. And uh, that was a huge surprise to everybody there. Uh, so how did you counteract their speed? Well, we would have to anticipate what they're going to do. I mean, that's the best thing you can do is be there to block yeah. when they get there because they're going to go fast. You can't outrun them. And if you don't have enough arms and forces with you, we would have a hard time bringing up enough forces in time to combat them. So we were uh, realized that we had to pretty much fight with what we had and, and uh, also uh, to anticipate what kind of moves they're going to make.